If we're going to get most people driving EVs in the next decade or so, we're gonna need a lot more chargers. But DC fast chargers like this are not the chargers we really need. I mean, we do need some. So let me explain. Well, today, about 80% of the EV drivers have access to charging at home where they park overnight. And that's great because if you charge there overnight, you can get 200, 300, 400 miles of range every single day. You're only coming to a DC fast charger if you're on a road trip or something like that. Super convenient. It's actually better than owning a gas vehicle in that regard. But today in the US, about one third of people do not have access to charging at home. They don't even have like a 120 volt outlet next to where they park that they could plug in and trickle charge. You can divide the group up into two major groups you have multi-family who live in apartments and things like that in big clusters of people they might park in a garage or a big lot and then you would have people who park on the street and really if you look at multi-family that is there's a lot of solutions for that you can install level two chargers there's companies like blink doing that in a parking garages and, and things like that and then there's also companies like orange charger who i really really like they i did a video on them a little while back you should check it out up here they essentially are putting in really inexpensive outlets in parking garages for multi-family housing and that's a really good solution to roll it out to a lot of people but i'm not really interested in that i'm mainly interested in my group which is the street parkers. So for folks like me, the narrative is typically you buy your electric car and then you'll go to a DC fast charging station whenever you need to charge. You'll go shopping, you'll go to the coffee shop, you'll do other errands while you're out and about, and it'll take you 15 to 20 minutes to charge. There's a couple reasons that's not a good idea for most people. For one, I don't wanna have to go out and go shopping every time I want to charge my car. Secondly, uh, you may be waiting a lot more than 20 minutes because if you want to get up to 90, 100% charge, the charge rate tapers after about 70%. And you're going to be sitting there for a lot longer. So on road trips, you'll typically only charge up to maybe 80% peak. And that gives you a good speed so you can get onto the next, next station as quick as possible. But if you're doing this on a daily basis and, or if you're on a road trip and you really want to top up before you go, you're going to have to sit there a lot longer. So it's inconvenient. But there's another huger inconvenience, which is cost. So a DC fast charging station like this will cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to put in the ground. Then there's recurring costs. So you have maintenance costs, but then you also have demand charges. And a demand charge is when the power company charges a large user of electricity. They're pulling a lot of power at one time. So I'm pulling about 50 kilowatts, but if you had four vehicles here, you could be charging up to 600, 700, 800 kilowatts at a time. And the power company says, whoa, you're pulling a lot of power and they jack up the rates. So you better believe that the Electrify America or the other DC fast charging company is passing that cost on to me. So right now I am paying 48 cents per kilowatt hour to charge my bolt. And if I use the efficiency of this bolt and then I compare it against gasoline today at $3.80, that's close to the national average, you do the math and this comes out to being about a 31 mile per gallon equivalent car. So that means that I'm paying the same cost for, get, for electric as I would pay for gas in a Honda Civic. So essentially all the cost benefits of driving electric um, evaporate. For comparison, if I charge at home, I pay 13 cents per kilowatt hour. This is 117 mile per gallon equivalent. These cost factors are a huge factor in why I don't recommend DC fast charging for daily use. I'm not anti DC fast charging. I will be using it today when I go to Pittsburgh and I, I really need it for that. But every day, terrible. But what if you could just charge on the street next to your house? Then you would be set, right? Well, a lot of cities are doing this from LA to St. Paul to Kansas City to New York City and even here in Narberth, Pennsylvania, which is kind of like where I live. This is a level two charger by a Canadian company, Flow, and it's made for street charging. And it can charge at up to 7.2 kilowatts at 15 cents a kilowatt, which is a good price. So if you lived here, like John, who I just talked to, this would be a great option. You could plug in here overnight, you could charge your vehicle, and you'd be ready to go the next day. The problem is most likely you do not live here with John. So you're going to be stuck charging uh, who knows where. John told me that in the three months this has been sitting here, only a handful of people have actually used the charger, which kind of highlights how it's not really at a terribly convenient spot. If the city did want to put them next to places where it might be more convenient, you might have to run a new power supply and trench the hoy along the street this here was obviously in a place where they could just run in the power supply from a convenient power pole and call it a day. But getting these in front of the right houses is super important. 
A pilot program to make electric vehicle charges more accessible in Narberth is not going over well with some residents. Betsy Harvey and her family moved to this street in Narberth six years ago for its tight knit, family friendly community. But Saturday morning, she was alarmed to come out of her home to see a crew digging up ground and installing electric vehicle charging infrastructure right off her front yard. Harvey says she doesn't own an EV and neither do her neighbors. It's about like putting a gas station in front of someone's property. So why are these units so large and gas pump like? Well, it comes down to this guy. On a typical home charger, you'll just wrap it around the charger and call it a day. But on a public charger, what tends to happen is people don't take care of the cable, it lays on the ground, it gets wet, broken, all sorts of issues happen there. So you need a retraction system. You could use a hose reel style retractor, kind of like on an air compressor hose, and that would just pull the cable back in. But then you have this extra point of failure. It coils the cord up pretty tight, which also isn't good for the cord. And they're very, very expensive. That's the biggest issue. So you could go with something like you have here, which is a spring-loaded tower retractor, which when you pull on the cable, it comes out, gives you enough length to go to the vehicle, but then it sucks it back up into the air when you don't need it. And it works but it's huge, like 10, 12 feet tall. Also, these units have these large blue boxes, which kind of look nice, but why blue? Why so bright? Why so big? It has a nice display, you can tap to pay, things like that. Not something I would really want in front of my house. And so if I was parking here every day in front of my house and suddenly the city came in and installed one of these that popped up out of the ground, I'd be pretty pissed that I lost my favorite parking spot, and rightly so. The alternative, is really the city puts these everywhere and there is no assigned parking, but the city's not going to do that. It's going to cost tens of thousands of dollars per plug and you'd have to rip up all the streets. And then you're way ahead of EV adoption. So you'd be putting them out there well in advance of when people actually need them. So back in 2007, the city of Philadelphia did something super innovative. You gotta think, 2007 on the East Coast, there is literally zero EVs. There's no Teslas, there's no Nissan Leafs, there's just nothing. And they came along and they said, hey, if you wanna charge in front of your house, we'll permit it so that you can put it out there, other people can use it too, and you'll get an assigned EV only charging spot. Between 2007 and 2017, 68 people took them up on that. And if you know anything about Philadelphia, parking is in short supply and there's a lot of arguments about the parking spots. And so rightly so, people were fighting over this. They said, hey, you have an EV, nobody else has an EV. You basically got a free reserved parking spot in front of your house when you put this charger out. And so by 2017, the city had enough comments and enough complaints from people that they just canceled the program right as EV adoption was taking off. And so that left them with no options. And so people were resorting to running extension cords across the sidewalk to their car. And there's obviously issues regarding the electricity safety and the tripping safety of that. But people from Portland to Washington DC to New York City, and I even know a guy in Eastern Pennsylvania who are doing this. In fact, there's a guy over in Jersey City, Sal, he has the Nay to Gas YouTube channel. He's charging out of his kitchen window to his Model Y over the sidewalk, and then he shuffles around a couple of Nissan Leafs to make sure he always has that parking spot. It works for him, but man, it's complicated. So what's the solution for street charging? Well, me being me, an engineer, I decided two and a half years ago to start a company to solve this problem. And we're really going about it in a lot of different ways where we are solving the issues I've raised today. Uh, the company is called Cool Street, and I'm not gonna get into all the details of what we're doing today, but just know that I will be sharing. So if you are someone who charges on the street and and really is in a situation very similar to myself, I would really love to hear your challenges, the things you see as being problems, what you're looking for. And then as, we, as I show you what I'm doing, I think you'll have a lot of comments and suggestions and there'll be ways to get involved in this. I'm really looking for people to support the things that we are doing as a company. And really this channel and you guys are a huge part of that, so keep following there's going to be so much coming i just wanted to do this video to kind of launch what we're doing and make you aware of that so i'm not no spoilers beyond this and i will see you guys in the next video